Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have 20 coastal 4th of July DIYs for you, all using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So the first item is free. I found a really gnarly piece of driftwood at the beach. It can be anything. If you're not next to a beach, you could always use a stick or a log, something that you find on a walk or in your yard or something like that. This one's a little crazy. I'm just trimming it up just a tiny bit, um, but I kind of like it all wild and crazy. We're going to transform it into a sailboat. So this is just a little wood piece that I had from Dollar Tree out of one of the little crafting kits. It can be any flat surface, any little flat piece of wood. I just needed something to act as a base for my driftwood. And so that's what I'm going to do is just hot glue that onto that wood that I painted a beachy blue color. I want to do like a 4th of July sailboat with this um, using fabrics from the Dollar Tree. So I just need it to stand up and just any kind of piece of wood, any kind of craft wood, maybe even a Dollar Tree ruler might work for that. Then right in the middle, I just break out my power drill and I'm just going to drill a hole here in the middle so that we can make a sail. Now for the sail, I'm using one of these, which is like the little hot dog sticks from the Dollar Tree, but you can use any kind of dowel you have, but I think this one's going to work perfectly. I'm just cutting it down to size there with my miter scissors and putting a little hot glue in the hole to glue it in place. And that's how it looks so far. So I want to use some shore living fabric with starfish on it. And then I picked up some of these 4th of July bandanas from the Dollar Tree so we could get some stripes. I couldn't find any like flag stripe fabric at the Dollar Tree, so a bandana will work perfectly for this. But I only really want the stripes, so I'm going to cut off the stars and then kind of measure how big I need it to be because I also measured my sail and can just kind of look cut a tab there so I know exactly where to cut, right? I um, decided it was a little too wide, so I'm going to take one row off of the stripes, try to cut a straight line there. Now, just using my ruler, I am going to try to cut a straight line here all the way across. I decided I better use my ink pen so I'll know exactly where to cut. And I just cut inside that line that I made with my ink pen. And we have a very easy little 4th of July sale. I left the seam on the bottom because why not? That kind of adds to it. Then for the other side of the sale, we need stars, right? So I thought this starfish fabric from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree would be perfect. If you want a more traditional flag looking um, sailboat, they do have the blue and white stars fabric at the Dollar Tree, sometimes if you're lucky. But I wanted to do coastal, so I think this is gonna look really cute together. What do you guys think? So it's just a matter of cutting another sail. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that right there at the seam. And then using my ruler, just to get some straight lines, we can cut a sail here for the other side. Now, usually like a sailboat has like a bigger side and this, that's what this is gonna be. So I measured out exactly how big I wanted it by looking at my driftwood. And then just again, use my ruler to draw a line on there and we're gonna simply cut this out. I don't think we're gonna have any problems with fraying or anything like that. But I did give them a quick iron cause they were a little bit wrinkly. Sometimes that fabric, when it's folded up like that for a while, the Dollar Tree can stay that way. Now, for the flag, I didn't have like any hooks um, to do like any like, you know, 
a lot of times they put the little hooks into the wood and you string it in there. So I'm just gonna string directly to the fabric. I just used a big needle <laughs> to poke some holes in the corners. And then I'm just using some Dollar Tree twine. This one's really cute. It's like the brown and white twine. And it's just a matter of getting it through there. I found that my Cricut weeder might do a better job of making a little bit larger hole, but then I just knot the twine on the other side to keep it in place. Now we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side with our little flag stripes and feed that through and tie it off. And then we can attach the little ropes to the sail that we made and to the boat. Had a little bit of trouble on that one, but I think this is going to work really well and it's a quick fix. Now, recently at Dollar Tree, I was able to find some of the little hooks that you could use for this, but it's not something that I often see at Dollar Tree. I had a little bit more trouble um, with the material in the bandana. So when I couldn't quite get it, I just tied the corner. I think it's gonna be fine. So now it's just a matter of laying out our sails just like we want. And again, we can just tie it on our little dowel we have right here in the middle to put the sail exactly where we want it, bottom and top. And then we'll just need to attach the other one down to the piece of driftwood. So same thing. These are gonna be pretty even with each other just knotting that around. And then I can even knot the two together, cutting off the excess. And then we're gonna do the same thing here at the top. Who knew that making a sailboat was so expensive, right? I have spent big money on sailboats for decorations. Isn't that cute? And it's patriotic, but it's also so coastal and beautiful that it doesn't scream 4th of July, it just, Hints at it a little bit, right? With the red and white sail. And I just glued mine right, twine right inside my driftwood. I had it opening there. And then on this side, I don't. So I'm just gonna kind of glue it to the a hole in the back, just wherever I could find an inconspicuous area back there. It's so cute so far. I do use a little hot glue there at the top to make sure that that stays in place. Also at the bottom, I don't want them slouching down. And then I just wanted to make a flag for the top and I thought I would use a little bit more shore living fabric just for that beachy blue color that, um, that I've used on the base and that's also on the starfish. So I just need the tiniest little bit of fabric here to do like a two sided flag. So what I wanna do is just wrap it around and kind of make it look like it's shaped like a little pennant. I probably should, could, should have cut it all out in one piece, but I just cut two pieces down, the same size, just two little triangles, just to make it a little bit stiffer so that it will stand up like a flag. And then I just hot glue them together and I did leave a tab on the back of my triangle there so that I could wrap it around. But I also don't want that to be visible, so I trimmed off the corners. Then I used a little bit of hot glue and I'm just gonna secure that to my skewer for a little flag right there on top. Now it is gonna need a little hot glue to keep this in place, but I think this turned out really cute. What do you guys think about this coastal patriotic sailboat? This is how it looks in my home. Sorry for the blurry pictures. I don't know why I took one picture of all of these and I don't have them out yet this year to take a new picture, but I do have some clear footage if you stick around for the final reveal. Okay, next DIY, we are gonna DIY a little patriotic seahorse using a seahorse sign from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. I wanted a light blue, not a traditional blue for a flag, but a light beachy blue, and I didn't really have what I wanted. So I mixed like three or four blue colors together until I got the perfect shade of blue I was looking for for this little guy. And we are just painting all over the front of our seahorse sign. I was thinking we could paint the seahorse to look like the stars on a flag, right? 
and I am gonna use the existing design that's already on there, but to make it a little bit more obvious, I'm just kind of drawing it back on with a blue ink pen. It's gonna go with my blue theme, right? And it had these little lines all the way down it. I can still kind of see exactly where they're at. So I just drew those all back on. I'm also gonna go around the little starfish that is on there and draw that back on with an ink pen as well. And this is just way easier than like a fine tipped um, paint pen or something like that. I'm just drawing everything back on over my paint. So only one coat, so I can still kind of see through it, but I also put the word C because I want to keep that design, but I also want to make it look patriotic for the 4th of July. So once I got that all drawn back on, I am gonna paint the little starfish white with a paint pen. And then I'm also gonna go over the word C and color that in with a paint pen as well. You don't have to worry about staying in the lines perfectly when you do a coastal farmhouse decor. You know, a little um, distress is always good, right? So I love that. I love like the white painting on blue. I always think it looks nice and beachy. Just kind of filling in my paint pen a little bit there to make it look a little bit less like marker lines. And if you need to, you can always go back and touch up your ink a little bit too. Now it's time to make a sign to display this on. I'm going to use some of the skinny 15 by three, it looks like inch shells from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I love crafting with these. Uh, the thicker, these are the thicker, thinner, um, skinnier ones. The other ones are a little bit boxier. I love both. They're thick, they're great quality wood. It's got that beautiful wood grain on there. So I'm just gonna combine two together, attach them with hot glue, but you could use any kind of wood sign you have that's long enough that's kind of shaped like a rectangle and I just wanted to provide a fun little base there for it. Then we're going to cover our seahorse with starfish. That's going to give me my flag pattern that I'm looking for in my decor and these are little white molded starfish that I buy on Amazon. I do have them listed below in my Amazon shop. They're super cute. I buy these in white and like a teal blue and I use them for crafting all the time. They're just the right size. So I just hot glued those all over my seahorse. Then using the rope that came with the shelves, I'm just gonna cut down a piece, tying it off in front on both sides to make a simple little hanger for a sign. Just burning off a little bit of the fuzzies. It looked a little bit rough but I think it looks really fun. I thought I could leave the holes in the bottom or if you wanna fill them up, you can always use some more of that twine, just stringing it around the back. It's not really gonna be a hang hanger. I'm just gonna knot it in the front just to kind of give it a uniform look. And how easy was that? Here is our little blue and white star seahorse for the 4th of July. It's so cute. Simple, but really creative. It gives me that look I was going for and wait till you see it all put together for my coastal patriotic decor. Hey, recognize these guys? We're gonna use these again. You guys know I love decorating with wall shelves, but you could use any of the Dollar Tree craft wood, honestly. These are just kind of like a shortcut that I really love. I haven't been able to find this particular shelf maybe in a month or two. Um, it seems like they're preferring the wider ones that don't have quite as pretty of a finish on there. Some of them do, but this one's got like an MDF back. So they are a little bit different. And so again, I am just taking the rope off of these because I want to put these together just to make a project. and that looks really good. What I wanted to make out of these was a coastal American flag. I was showing you, you could also use those long signs from the Dollar Tree to make this as well. There's lots of options, but I wanted like three different pieces so that I could have like openings in between the slats to kind of 
make a very coastal looking flag. So I'm gonna use painter's tape. And what I wanna do is mark off about halfway down. I wanna use, have my flag stripes be about half of the board. So I'm just kind of estimating about half, um, exposing the top half there. But I also want this to look like an American flag, right? So I'm also gonna go over it here to try to create like the flag star box at the top. So just kind of lining that up so I don't make my stripes go too far. And then for our flag, we're gonna do it in some fun beachy colors, right? So I'm gonna mix, I think this is turquoise and white acrylic paints together to give me a really a light turquoise color. And I love that color. I think that looks really nice and beachy. And instead of red and white stripes on here, we're gonna do a beach version, right? So the top half, I want to do the stripes. So I am just painting the top half of each board, but also avoiding the area where there would be stars. So this one, I can go across the whole shelf or piece of wood with the blue paint. And just peeling off our painter's tape. That worked great. We got some great flag stripes going on here. And you can kind of see it coming together there a little bit, the flag, right? So now I need to kind of reverse tape it so that we can do the box for the stars, right? So just lining that up to where I painted before to give a perfect little box there that I can paint. And for this one, I'm gonna go in with a different color of blue. I believe this is lake and I mixed it with white. I basically just wanted something a little bit more blue, a little bit less turquoise. So it still wasn't quite the color I wanted. So I added a little royal. If you don't have the colors that you need, you can always mix colors together and experiment. And that's what I did. I mixed all kinds of blues together there to give me a fun like sky blue color, something that's gonna look different than the blue we used on the stripes because I definitely need a different color for a contrast, right? So we are just gonna go ahead and paint that square, that color of blue. So it's kind of like a light blue and turquoise flag is what we're going for. And I think those colors look really pretty together. Can't tell you what color that is. <laughs> that is a Crafty Beach original, I guess. Now it's time to put this flag together. So we're gonna use the rope that came with it, of course. And we're just gonna tie it together. So I just knot it in the front, cut a piece, string that to the next one, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side at the same time. That way I can get them, you know, fairly even, the gap that's gonna be hanging in between because I kind of want it to look like, um, you know, like a hanging board sign that it's a little bit flexible. There's a little bit movement in between. So I just tie those two together and we're gonna keep working up the, our little coastal flag doing the same thing. And you know, a traditional American flag is wonderful, but it's always fun to kind of put your own touches on things. And I think my little beach version of the American flag is really cute too. It's just a matter of feeding these through, trying not to get too much fraying. It might work a little bit better if you use a little bit of hot glue on the tip. just stringing them all along. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take apart another one of these. They also have these metal rings on them, which are great, so you should always save that, right? What I did is I just peeled off one of the ropes and left the other one tied on there because, hey, it's there, we might as well use it. It would make a great coastal hanger. So with just one string attached instead of two, I fed that in and tied it off there in the front. Now for starfish, stars. Um, I'm gonna use those same white stars that we used on the seahorse that I get on Amazon. If you don't have these and you wanna put this together, you can use one of the Dollar Tree starfish instead. 
it would probably be about the right size and just put one star on there that would be totally fine this one these are great because i'm able to get like nine of them on there three by three by three and these are so easy all you got to do is glue them on they have a nice flat back and i'm just gonna leave them that existing white color i think that looks so pretty against the flag and it's going to coordinate nicely with that seahorse that we just made that was more a bluish blue too with the white stars and then the holes on the bottom were bothering me so quick fix just tie a knot string it through tie them on the back and you will have no holes in your sign <laughs> Easy peasy. What do you guys think about my little crafty beach coastal American flag for 4th of July? It's so cute. Sorry for the grainy image. I don't know what I was thinking, only taking one picture. If I didn't have so much going on, I would dig these out and take some better pictures. But again, there is video footage at the end, so hopefully you can get a little bit clearer look at these. Now the next DIY are the anchors from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use two because we're gonna make this like really special. We're gonna make it, make it patriotic, of course. Um, but I didn't want just a thin flat anchor like hanging on my wall. I wanted it to be a bigger piece. And so I'm gonna combine two together to make it a nice thicker chunky project. And of course, what we're doing on this is stripes so i'm just using painter's tape and just putting it on there in stripes i'm not measuring or anything just kind of estimating a good flag stripe pattern right there on it also taping it down to my silicone mat which is going to make it a little bit easier to paint now we are going to go in with some traditional bright red acrylic paint to give some bright red stripes on here for this flag and I love mixing some red in with the blues. It may really pops against the blue decor. And then just peeling off my painter's tape to reveal some beautiful red stripes. And I'm not gonna paint the white lanes white. I'm just gonna leave it the natural wood. I think it looks great in coastal. But for the back anchor, I thought it would be fun to do a bright blue color. So this is turquoise acrylic paint, just going all over with that beautiful blue color because this is gonna kind of have a peekaboo effect peeking out from behind the red and white stripe anchor. Kind of like that, if you know what I mean. So a fun little touch and I'm glad I decided to mix it up with a different color. Now to make it chunky and space them out, I'm just using those little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree and hot gluing three of them to the top of the back anchor. So it will um, stand out from the back so you can see the contrast and it's gonna make it a way more um, chunkier piece. It looks way better. And then just using hot glue, I'm attaching the anchor to the front. Look how pretty those colors look together. Now I thought some Dollar Tree white nautical rope would look great if we kind of strung it through here. So I'm gonna kind of go between signs. I'm just trying to find a good place to start. I am gonna glue the top down so it kind of stays in place. Like right here on that wood block in the middle, right through like the hole in the top of the anchor. And this is the Dollar Tree white rope that I think the thinner one, but it doesn't matter. They would both look great. And then I'm just stringing it around the anchor, you know, kind of like you see with anchors and decor, trying to figure out exactly what looks the best. And then I can secure it with some hot glue. I think that looks pretty good. So a little hot glue there to keep it in place. And this DIY is complete. You can just hang it with the little circle opening there at the top. And wasn't that easy? I love it. And it looks really great, especially from the sides where you can see that blue color um, kind of sneaking out from behind. Super fun. And that goes well with that starfish seahorse that we did because then we have the stars and stripes. 
Now the next DIY, I picked this cutting board up at the Target dollar spot. It is just the American flag. Nice chunky piece of wood. Not sure if they'll have these again this year. I hope so, because they're really cute. And I'm just using an aqua paint pen and going around the border just to give me a little touch of blue on this DIY. Now, if you can't find this, I did see that they have American, um, American flag, um, America shaped or United States shaped um, signs at the Dollar Tree today that you could recreate this because even though it's that beautiful wood, we're gonna cover it with our own wood. So this is the driftwood that you see me use a lot. I get this at Target. It is about $10 a box, but it does go on sale. So I always try to stock up, but you could use anything for driftwood. You could use actual driftwood that you have. Um, a lot of you guys have been using um, the little wood chips that you barbecue with, I think. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but it looks really cute. So use whatever you've got, but this works great. It's nice and flat. They're pretty uniform. So I'm able to just kind of put it together like a puzzle using hot glue. If you need to overlap, that's fine. I'm just trying to cover up the entire map of the United States with driftwood to do a fun little driftwood United States. Now, when you get up here in the northeast, east, it gets a little tricky. You're just going to have to use some smaller pieces and just make it work. <laughs> and that's what I do. But I do love like the mint green color around the border. It provides a little bit of color, even though most of this is just going to be that light driftwood color. And I did have to cut down some little tiny pieces just to get in the little nooks and crannies of some of the states. Then I'm just gonna attach a sawtooth hanger that I have left over from my canvas onto the back, just by hammering that into the back of the cutting board. And we have a fun wall decor, little coastal patriotic touch that looks great with everything that we've been DIYing today. So this is pretty simple to make and I think it's really cute. And again, I think you could totally do that with the the um, sign from the Dollar Tree that is the same exact shape. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna use two of these little bamboo turners from the Dollar Tree. And I thought they kind of look like oars, right? So we're gonna DIY some oars with these little spatulas from the Dollar Tree. Um, I was trying to figure out how big of a handle they kind of needed because I didn't want them to have like that existing handle. I wanted to have like a little, you know, um, or handle here at the end to make them look like little paddles. And so I just cut the popsicle stick down to size and then I cut a rounded edge on it to try to match, you know, the end that's already on there. So I cut down two of those to size and we're just going to attach those to our little oars. And I thought they were a little too big. That's why I'm just trimming them down a little bit, but trying to cut that curve back in there. Cutting popsicle sticks is usually pretty easy, but just trying to get it where it looks symmetrical. Then a little bit of hot glue right here on the tip. And we're gonna have little handles for our oars. This was such a sweet, cute little project. Then I kind of want them to look patriotic because hey, this is the 4th of July, right? So I thought some red stripes here on the handle could give them a slight patriotic feel. And it looks like something that would be on an oar anyway, right? So just a red paint pen, I do the front and both sides where you might be able to see it there on the handle. And then I'm gonna go in here and do the same thing on the other side. I just want them to have some slight touches that are also patriotic because they're gonna be displayed with all of these DIYs you've seen me make so far. Now on the rest of the paddle down here, I thought we would do stars for the flag, right? I'm just using a white paint pen and just drawing stars in there, dotting in the centers, just kind of staggering them like they would be on a flag. You could also do starfish for this. That would be really cute as well. And then for the popsicle stick, I'm gonna use like a mint green color to kind of bring in a little bit of that blue beachy vibe. 
And then we can crisscross them together like that. And it looks like we have a little tiny pair of oars. Super fun for a small DIY. These would be great on a tear tray as well, I think. They're not that large. And then just using some twine, I am tying them together where they come together here in the middle and flipping that over and tying them again. Now, I wasn't sure they'd stay in place, so I do use a little bit of hot glue there to secure them so they'll stay exactly where I need them to be. Just a matter of letting that hot glue dry. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around with that same twine to kind of look like they're tied together a little bit. And then using that twine, I'm also gonna tie it off and then just tie a little loop here in the back to make a little built-in hanger. Cause these are gonna hang on my wall. Quick and easy, we have some little coastal patriotic oars. And this is how they look hanging on my wall. I hope you guys are getting some great ideas. They also have larger versions of actual oars at the Target Dollar Spot this year. I did pick some up, so we'll see. I'll probably use them for 4th of July again this year. Super fun idea. Okay, next DIY, I just needed a bucket, and this one I found at the Target Dollar Spot. I thought it would be perfect because it's a beautiful beachy blue color, but you could take a Dollar Tree bucket and do the same thing. What I liked about it is that it had that rope handle on it. I thought that looked really coastal and the color was really coastal. Now, I'm just trying to fill up most of the bucket so I don't have to use so much stuff. So I just used like a tin bucket and some trash bags because I had no recycling that day. Something that I can reuse, just a, a spacer in there. And then I wanted a little patriotic touch on the front. I found this little American flag patch at the Dollar Tree. And I thought that'd be really cute and simple right on the front of our beach pail. And so I'm just attaching that with hot glue. And now it's just in the regular crafter square section. If you're not able to find it, you could probably use any kind of flag decor from the Dollar Tree that's small like that, maybe even like a window decal. Then since it's a beach pail, we are gonna fill it up with beach vines. First, I'm using just like bl white bleached seashells I have from the beach. You can use whatever you've got. I just wanted a little bit of a shell feel. And then, of course, starfish because it's the 4th of July. And these are the white starfish from Dollar Tree. And I think that looks really cute because you can see the seashells like peeking through a little bit. But mostly you're going to see the stars, which I think goes with the patriotic feel. But I'm not going to stop there. This is a plunger handle from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make some fun coastal little like uh, bottle rockets with these. Some fireworks. So I'm just staining this with some antique wax by Waverly, but I don't want it too dark. So I'm wiping off the excess with a baby wipe to give me a lighter stain. And I got a really good deal on this. Like the plunger part was missing. So they had it marked down to like 50 cents at my Dollar Tree. But I'm also going to stain um, some of the little food skewers from the Dollar Tree. I thought we would make like three like bottle rockets. So they're gonna have like this skinny stick, like a bottle rocket has, and then like the thicker uh, firework part at the end that makes it do its magic. Now they do stain a little bit differently than the handle to the plunger, but just trying to get it as close as I can get it. Maybe not wipe off as much. <laughs> Because I kind of want that medium wood color. It's going to go nicely with that brown rope that's on our little beach bucket. Then I use my saw to cut down three pieces out of the plunger handle. All about the same size that we can make look like little rockets. And I love, I was first I was going to cover these with paper, but I'm glad that I stained the wood instead. I think it really adds some charm to these. And that's what I'm talking about. Just gluing it on the skewer like that to make it look like a bottle rocket. Some little DIY faux fireworks. And I'm gonna do that here on all three and then we can decorate them a little bit more. I thought we could have these bottle rockets like sticking out of our beach bucket um, just to give it a little bit more 4th of July fun. 
So I think that looks pretty good. I think they're all secure. Then I wanted to decorate them a little bit because otherwise they look kind of boring, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little um, Dollar Tree brown jute twine to make little wicks for the bottom of the bottle rockets that can kind of stick out. <laughs> kind of like dynamite wicks, if you will. And we're just going to attach those to the bottom of our little bottle rockets with just a dot of hot glue. Like it's coming out the bottom, a little wick that we can light it with. And just kind of stand those up upside down, standing the twine like straight up in the air. So super easy. Then I'm going to take a little a Dollar Tree a burlap ribbon and I just kind of cut it in half and cut the wire off the end just because I want to do like a little a burlap rocket top. So I just kind of like make it into a little cone shape and hot glue it together and just cut off a very rustic, simple little burlap cone to go on the top of our fireworks. I thought that would make it look a little bit like a rocket on there. And just another little fun beachy touch to go with all of the wood and everything too. And so I'm gonna do that same exact thing for the other two bottle rockets. Just kind of cutting it in half, cutting the wire off, forming a cone shape and just hot gluing it to itself. Super easy. And then you just have to cut the bottom to make that bottom uh, like a nice um, flat um, line to go all the way around to the side of the rocket. Now I did decide that I wanted them to be different lengths sticking out. So I did cut one down a little bit. This one I thought would make it look like flag stripes. So I'm just using a red paint pen and just drawing some flag stripes on there, leaving that stain, but just adding a little bit of striped fun there all the way around. They don't have to be perfect, just kind of close. And this one, I took a white paint pen and I thought we would put some little stars on here. So I'm just drawing some simple like freehand stars all over with more of a like fine tip but you could also just draw stars on there and fill them in. It would be super cute too. I just wanted a little bit, a few more patriotic touches on the fireworks. And then I thought they were a little too, you couldn't really tell, you know? So I do go back in here with a white paint pen and kind of fill them in. To make them a little bit more substantial. And I thought we could have like one of these like sticking out each direction of the bucket and one like sticking straight up. And I'm just going to do the simple red flag stripes on this one too. And then it's just a matter of putting them in there. I do use a little hot glue on the tip just to kind of make it stay where I want it to. Just because I kind of had weird filler going on in there underneath my seashells and starfish. Um, and then kind of like work um, the other two kind of around the sides here. Super whimsical, super beachy. I think this is so fun. What do you guys think about my little beach bucket full of bottle rockets? Super cute. And then you can always reuse that bucket. I think that's really cute. If you wanted to recreate that, you could take some Dollar Tree rope and just knot the sides, forming a new handle instead of a plastic handle. But I love that color of blue. It goes great with my entryway table. This is actually a cosmetic bag that I found at the Dollar Tree. I love the color and I loved the saying. It says, oh my stars. So I thought we could just make it into a quick little DIY sign. It's about the same size as one of those little bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm just going to cut the front of the bag off and it's like a great like faux leather. It cut really easily and you never know what you're going to find. No matter what aisle of the Dollar Tree you're at, cosmetic bags can be great to DIY with. Just try to make that look a little bit more symmetrical. I did want it to have a little bit of a wood border so that we could decorate it a little bit. But I think that looks really cute. 
I wasn't sure my lines were uh, quite up to par. So I do actually measure them with a ruler to make my cutting a little bit better. And then I thought it needed to show maybe a little bit more wood on the top and the bottom just to space it out a little bit. So I kind of play with it until I'm happy with it. Oh, my stars. I love that saying. We're going to use that again here in another DIY. I think it's so fun. Now to attach it, I'm just going to use some Dollar Tree thumbtacks to go straight into the bamboo cutting board. No glue or anything required. We're just going to kind of um, pin it down. It's another little fun little touch. That bamboo, though, is hard. It can bend those for sure. There was a couple I had to try a couple times. And get this attached. I thought we could also decorate it a little bit more. If I could finally get this secure. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> and I thought some stars would be perfect. These are some laser cut craft um, stars from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I thought they were very ornate. Um, you know, they're kind of like um, just made out of cardboard, but they're really cute. You can do a lot of fun things with these. And so since it says, oh, my stars, I thought we would give it some stars to decorate it even further. Now, you could leave it that brown color, but I wanted to make mine a little bit beachy. So I'm just using some light blue. I think this is called Lake, just a very light blue color and painting over those. Isn't like the designs cut in there just beautiful? I love that. It's a great way to get um, a DIY a material um, to make your DIY without having to be able to make it. You know, some people have those like laser machines. Those things are so cool that cut things out. And I'm just kind of arranging them in a random pattern all over our little Oh My Star sign. And then we're just going to attach them with hot glue. I saw that bag and I just thought, you know, this would be perfect for Coastal Patriotic. The saying's perfect. The color's perfect. Just got to find some way to make this into a sign. And those little bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree, I love picking them up. They're so versatile. They're nice and thick and you can just do about anything with them. Then I thought it needed a frame. So some of this nautical rope cotton from the Dollar Tree, the white rope. This is, I think, the thinner one. I'm just going to do a really cute little rope border on this. It is definitely thick enough for this. The bamboo board is, um, cutting board is rather thick. And so I'm just hot gluing that all around the edges just to give another little coastal touch. I do leave a little loop there at the top so that we can make a hanger up there to hang this on the wall. And just trying to figure out exactly where my center is so I don't hang it too crooked. And then I was trying to decide if I should just loop it or twist it at the top. And then just cut off here at the corner and we can finish the frame. Just a fun way to hang it, but it's also gonna add a little coastal farmhouse charm to this sign. I did decide to loop it, so I just twist it, and then we're gonna glue that down to the top of the sign. It's gonna have a little rope loop hanger right here at the top. And this isn't very heavy, so it's gonna be pretty easy to hang with that, I think. And there is our little O oh, of my star sign. It's kind of hard to read the yellow parts there, right? But it turned out so cute. It was so easy to put together. You know, you can just craft with about anything. I've been finding those mermaid pencil bags too. Those would be cute for a DIY. Now, this is a seagrass tear tray that I found at the Target's dollar spot for $5. Super beachy and cute. You can use any little tear tray you have, but this is a nice tiny one. Um, and so I think we can fit it on my entryway table with all of this patriotic decor. Now, this was the shore living fish they had last year with the blue stripes. This year they have it um, in solid colors and the stripes are like going the other direction. <laughs> it's a little bit chunkier too, but you could always use that one as well. 
I'm just going to simply take the hanger off and sit it on the top of the tear tray. Then I wanted like a little beach house in there and I picked these up at the Target Dollar Spot too. Just some little chunky wood houses, but there's like a million options for like little houses like this at the Dollar Tree as well. I liked these because they were already like looking coastal right with the colors and the stars and stripes but I wanted to make them like a little bit more coastal. So these are some little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon. Again, these are linked in my store below. Um, I buy these in like the, you know, natural cream ivory, but I also like to buy these in blue. Look how cute they are. They're real little starfish and they're like dyed blue. And I'm just gonna glue those onto the stars. So it didn't even really have to have stars on there. I just have like the wood, with a stripe on a house with a little starfish on there for the stars. And this is such a small tear tray that really only a couple items can fit on it, but it's perfect for like an entryway where you don't have a lot of room. So I think that looks super sweet and um, I think that's really all it needs. I like the colors and everything on that, our little starfish house. Then I wanted to make another DIY, so I'm going to use a Dollar Tree sign. And then I found this great um, number four at the Target Dollar Spot for a dollar. I think it was just a house letter, but, you know, I'm not going to miss the opportunity for a four for the 4th of July, right? And then these signs from the Dollar Tree are those great wood signs that have, like, the little pop-out sign on the front. And I'm just going to cover that up with some of that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree that kind of looks like the white boards. That's gonna give it a nice coastal feel and make this a blank. This year they have like the actual blanks are a little bit bigger, um, but that would work as well. And then I thought we would attach like the four to the front of that. I did wanna kind of tone it down a little bit. So I take a little ivory and distress all over just to tone down like the little line between the boards and just to give it more of an ivory touch. And then for the four, I want it to stand out bold. So we're gonna paint the four red. And I'm just going over it with a paint pen. Easy peasy, it's just gonna be a simple number four sign. It's gonna get the point across. That's the 4th of July, right? And just something super easy. So once I get that painted red and dry, I'm just gonna hot glue that on our little Dollar Tree sign. And this I think is gonna be the perfect size to fit on this small little tear tray. Kind of standing it up on the back, but on the other side where it kind of peeks out from behind the house. Then I'm just gonna fill it up with some Dollar Tree seashells all over, just for fun. Makes a great filler, especially for a tiny tray like this where you're not gonna fit much more on there. And then a little American flag from the Dollar Tree is going to be the final touch. And I just stand that right on top, kind of threading it in the little hole against the hanger. And we have a little flag sticking out from behind our striped fish, our number four sign, and our little starfish house. Super beachy and super cute. Now, I kind of had a hole in this display that needed something, and I just wanted a star. And this is like a tear tray kit from the Target Dollar Spot. It's just a white wood star. Not counting that as a DIY, because it's not, but I just wanted to show you where I got it. I also wanted a little bit of seagrass. This is one of those $5 plants from the Dollar Tree, and they mark these down on sale too, if you watch them. I think I got this for like $3.75. And it looks coastal because it looks like seagrass, right? So I'm going to combine that with some of this burlap star ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And just a quick, easy DIY. We're just going to cover that white plain pot with the stars. I think the burlap ribbon looks super coastal. And the red and blue stars, perfect for finishing it off. So uh, that was a quick, easy DIY. And I displayed that with the other items that we've been crafting today too, to decorate my entryway for the 4th of July. And I had a little piece of coral actually in front of that one. 
Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video to tell you about my private Facebook group. I have it linked below. You're gonna be amazed at how crafty the Crafty Beach Bums are. And I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle on all of those is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, onto the front porch. I found these letters at Walmart. They were $1.99 USA, just giant like MDF letters. And we're gonna make a giant porch sitter sign for the front of my house for the 4th of July. I love this piece. Now the wood I got at Home Depot, they were called bed slats. They are one by fours. And they're already pre-cut, so they're 39 inches long, which is perfect for what I needed for the front of my home. I'm going to sit it on a little table next to my front door. They're a pretty good shape. They just required just a very light sanding. And they were like $3.76 when I bought them there at Home Depot a piece for those. Now, these are the secrets to building this today. I got these at the Home Depot as well. They're actually called wood joiners, and they're like these little metal prongs um, that you can use for construction purposes like this. And um, your girl is not a carpenter. So these were very useful. As you can see, I just put the two boards together, and I am just hammering those in the back. Um, that way I don't have to use really any wood glue or anything like that. And it's going to hold up to the weather. I don't have to worry about hot glue or something like that. So I just did that all the way down, trying to get rid of any bowing and gaps with that if I can, because I kind of want this to be one piece that we can then DIY. Now you guys like it when I include my mistakes, right? Okay. So I start laying out my painter's tape and I'm just using Dollar Tree painter's tape. I'm using little pieces of the tape itself to do stripes, but I kind of messed up here. I just started on the sides, not thinking anything about it. And then I was gonna go in with some candy apple red and I wanted to create a red stain for the stripes. Where I messed up was how I taped it because it's not gonna really look like a flag uh, with the red stripes in the middle. I should have done them on the sides, but I'm still gonna show you because you guys like it because, you know, we all have our craft fails, right? So I mixed that candy apple red paint with water to make a stain and then using a Dollar Tree roller because it's such a big project, I stained the red lines on there. And then I'm just gonna go back and Use the same painter's tape that we used before and reuse it over the top of our strained lines. And then I thought I would do the same exact thing for white. I would take some white acrylic paint, mix it half and half with water and kind of whitewash this because I wanted like a coastal beachy 4th of July sign. I wanted some of that great wood grain to still shine through. Now with the white, Maybe because I used, I think, Dollar Tree paint, it was already kind of too watered down. I kind of still had to keep adding more and more paint. <laughs> but I'm going ahead to include this because it did look cool, but it kind of looked like a carnival sign to me. When I peel it off, see, that doesn't look patriotic at all. I was so disappointed. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to be able to salvage this. We're gonna start from scratch. So I go over <laughs> the entire thing. I've made it too far in this process. We're gonna have a porch sitter sign, right? And I'm using some ivory chalk paint to cover it all up. So I'm not really gonna be able to stain it because we already did and I didn't like it, but just gonna try to disguise it and we can start from scratch and I can just paint flag lines on and all will be well. But Always got to include my fails because, hey, sometimes you just don't think when you're doing stuff like that. I just didn't think when I was laying out my tape for sure on that. So it did take quite a few coats of chalk paint to cover up my red stain, but I think I finally got it. So now it's already got the ivory, right? So that will be great for a stripe. While I have that, I'm going to go ahead and paint 
my USA letter set. I want these to have like a star or starfish design on those. And I'm gonna kind of use stickers for that. And so I kind of wanted a white background to do some stars. Now they also are rather thick, right? So I do go around the edges, kind of priming the entire letter with white, just so you don't have any of that just dripping over the edges. But you know, those rollers from the Dollar Tree actually work quite well, especially when you're working on a big project like this. But for the sides of the letters, you're definitely gonna have to get in there with a foam brush. And I love this uh, porch sitter. I DIY'd this the two years ago and I'm still using it. It's held up great and it's beautiful. So now lesson learned, I want stripes on the outside and I want more stripes because that two stripe thing was just not cutting it. So I switched to a thinner um, painter's tape, made sure my stripe was on the outside this time. I'm using that tape as spacers and doing a much thinner flag stripe because I want you to be able to tell that this is supposed to be a flag, right? Not a carnival sign. And this end is going to have to be white, but I think it's going to be okay because we're going to have all the five of these stripes, right? So now I'm going over the whole thing that I've got it taped off with a roller and some of that candy apple red acrylic paint until I get a good coat on there. Some nice red and white stripes. I hope, right? <laughs> and I liked it much better this time. I do go over it with a couple of coats because this is gonna be outside in the weather and I wanna make sure that it holds up. Just peeling off. This painter's tape was actually my good painter's tape 3M, but it did actually bleed a little bit here and there. But again, Coastal Farmhouse, it's forgiving. We can always touch it up a little bit if we need to. And that looks way more like flag stripes to me than it did before. So I'm happy with the redo, but it probably took me three times as much time, right? Now for the stars. I'm just using some green vinyl. Um, this is from the Dollar Tree, just to create some stars so we can do a star pattern on these. Now, I don't know why I did it this way, but what I did was I just cut out stars. They're actually starfish, but they're so small. I don't think anybody knows, but you know me. I was trying to be extra. And so I just made a whole bunch of star stickers, um, but you could do this with Dollar Tree stars as well. Now, looking back, there's a much easier way I could have done this. I could have just painted them blue and then made a stencil and painted the white stars on that way. But I don't know. I don't know why I did it this way because it's definitely more time consuming, but I was able to kind of wrap the starfish around the sides of the letters and make it look really cool. But I just had to keep making starfish <laughs> and putting those all over because I wanted to have white stars and I want to be able to paint the letters blue. But um, this was probably way more work than it needed to be, right? Rookie moves. But hey, at least it turned out cute, right? And I was trying to show you these really are starfish, right? <laughs> now for the blue color, I'm gonna use agave, this light blue chalk paint. It's um, a Waverly chalk paint from Walmart. And just going all over our blue letters with that. And with our beautiful star pattern on there. I guess another way I could have made them, well, that wouldn't really hold up outside. I was gonna say that I could have painted the stickers white or did a white vinyl, but that would definitely peel off in the Florida sun. So he had painted for durability for sure. So I got those all painted that beachy blue color. That's gonna be my stars, my USA letters. 
And then the other part that was a lot of work was just weeding all of those little stickers that we made off. In the end, I guess it was worth it because I think they turned out like really cool. I do go in and paint the sides of the letter that agave color as well. That I had kind of primed white earlier. And I guess all the hard work was worth it because look at all these beautiful little starfish all over my USA letters. Sometimes when a project is this much work, you know, you hope it lasts forever, right? <laughs> and we did a pretty good job putting this together, so hopefully it will. The only problem I've had is I think I added starfish with hot glue on this one. Probably should have used a little bit of a stronger glue, which I have hence went back forth and done. <laughs> So we have our USA letters. I do want to distress them a little bit to give them that coastal farmhouse vibe. So just using ivory and a chunky brush, maybe not that much distressing, but no worries. You get too much on there. Just wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. And I always like to distress like in one direction like that. Give it that rustic coastal feel. And I think those are going to look really pretty against our red and white stripes on our sign. But first, I want to make them a little bit more durable. So I did have some polycrylic and I'm going to seal these really good. So these are going to hold up well out in my crazy Florida summer wet season weather. I have a tiny bit of a roof over my a tiny porch area, but not much. So it is going to see some rain and I do want to seal these just a little final touch to make sure that starfish pattern stays beautiful. I'm also going to distress our beautiful stripe since I didn't get to stain it like I wanted. I thought I could kind of get the same effect. But be careful, make sure your red stripes are dry before you distress because I was getting a little pink there. We're not messing this up again, girl. Okay, I think Christ is averted. Just a little bit of distressing. Don't go wild. There, there you go. Much better. And we want this to last as well. So we're going to polycrylic seal this one too. This is me two years in talking to a rookie crafter here, <laughs> making this <laughs> porch sitter board, but she did a great job. <laughs> so just giving that a quick dry with my heat gun, and then we can start putting this together. Now, I want it to be a little bit bigger than the bed slats like ended up being. And so I am gonna frame it out a little bit with some wood that I actually just had laying around the garage just to kind of give it a larger feel, but totally optional. And look how cute our little letters look up against the stripes. Just trying to space them out evenly. And we're gonna use some wood glue on these to attach these to our sign. Did I have a little bit of bowing um, from the wood not being perfectly flush, but I think we're gonna be able to work around that. Now I do use a combination of hot glue and wood glue just for like a quick hold and a um, long-term hold combination. And that also helped me get rid of any bowing that I had there with the two boards. Now I actually have a whole bunch of wood slats that I have now from an old bed that I just cut down for craft wood the other day because my husband was like, if you don't use this wood soon, <laughs> you have to get rid of it. So I cut it down into little pieces, kind of like the craft wood you get at the Dollar Tree. Save me some coin maybe. And then I am just gluing those down. I don't like to throw away anything wood that's in halfway decent condition because, hey, we can craft with it, right? So the final letter is way down here. Wood glue and hot glue, and we're going to put this together. 
It would have been totally fine just like this, but some of the letters like this A were a little bit larger than the two boards together. And so I didn't really want them hanging off the edges like that. I thought maybe we could frame it and make it just a little bit larger. And this is the wood that we had. Just some trim pieces that I think maybe a Boy Scout project. My husband um, was really involved in Boy Scouts with my son and they were always building stuff. And so I have it, right? I might as well use it. They're just little trim pieces, but I don't want to do any miter corners or anything crazy. I just want something easy and coastal. So that's what we're going to do. Trying to find, um, you know, some halfway flat pieces of that and lining it up along the side of my porch sitter. And then I'm just going to cut it down to size. It's kind of hard to see because the sign is so big, but basically I'm just going from the top to the bottom with two pieces of wood. And then I'll do um, another piece of the scrap pieces from side to side. Just a very rustic like farmhouse frame, nothing special. But it did add another, I think, coastal touch because I'm just gonna leave the wood. Um, unstained like that. I think it was another a nice addition. I think he kind of framed it out a little bit. I liked it way better that way. So we have all four pieces cut down. And now we can just add that to our porch sitter sign and be done with this piece. And you can see what else we have for the front porch for 4th of July. Now, I thought about using the wood joiners for this, but I was having some issues with them, so I'm gonna try some wood glue, hot glue. They're just little trim pieces, and I think that combination would be good just to glue these to the side of our little wood slats. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the other, just try not to mix the two different kinds of glue together. Probably would be easier to have done this before I had my letters on the front, but this project kind of evolved, which is okay. And then we can glue the top and bottom pieces on the same way. And in the end, I'm really happy with it. Now, since we have that fun starfish, you know, design, because we're going coastal with this one, um, the final touches on this is going to be some Dollar Tree starfish. These are plastic, so I think they'll hold up out well outside. The hot glue, however, did not. So I would suggest using like maybe some E6000 on those because I did have to repair those um, after I think my first year of displaying it. So this is gonna be the third year of my USA um, porch sitter. And I love it. I made it for the fraction of a cost that you could have bought this anywhere else, that is for sure. And this is how it looks in front of my home for the 4th of July, super coastal and cute. What do you guys think about our little USA flag? Okay, we got that. Now we need a wreath for the front door. And I found this star wreath form from the Dollar Tree. But you know what? I couldn't think of any kind of material I wanted to cover this with um, that was going to work because what I want to do is kind of make a star frame to go on the front of a coastal reef. So your girl is going back to elementary school here. We're going to paper mache. It's been a long time since I paper mache Maybe I probably paper mache some volcanoes for my son, I'm sure. So just using some white school glue, I think from Dollar Tree, and I just shredded a local newspaper, and we're gonna go wild covering this star with paper mache You know, it was messy, but it was fun, and it turned out really cool, so. <laughs> Just like you remember, you just dip the strips in your glue. 
and just start wrapping it around. And this actually, it turned out way better than I could have imagined. And that is just regular school glue. And then I filled the glue bottle back up with water. So it's half school glue, half water to make it runny like that, right? Now I want the front part of my frame to be the prettiest, but I do wrap it all the way around um, just for even coverage. Basically kind of using the wires if I can, but I want like all the points and everything like that and all the shape of it because I want to do a star sign inside of it. This is just going to be a star frame. So we're going to speed this way up because it actually did take a little bit of time to put this together for sure. And just like paper mache, you remember growing up, you do have to let it dry too, but man, it turned out really durable in the end. <laughs> I made it nice and thick because I knew it was going to be outside and I was a little worried about hanging some paper on my front door, but it actually worked out great. My plan for this reef is to um, have a framed star on the front of like a life buoy. So we're going to do like a giant life buoy um, ring um, reef with this star dangling down in between it. So we're going to have the coastal, we're going to have the 4th of July, we're going to have all of it. But this is how the star reef looks with paper mache. I've never seen anybody else do this, so... Here you go. <laughs> now I did want to cover up the newspaper print um, because I didn't want you to be able to see the words and pictures and all that kind of stuff. So I just go over the whole thing with some ivory chalk paint to get really good coverage. And I'm even gonna do the back just to kind of make it more of a finished product. It's gonna hang on my front door. I don't want it to look like newspaper. And I thought that would help seal it as well, you know, to try to get away from the fact that it's kind of made out of paper. Then uh, once I get that dry, I'm gonna paint it bright red. At first I had visions of stripes, but I was like, nah, it doesn't need to be red stripes. I just want the whole frame to be bright red. And so I'm using, I think it's called Crimson um, Chalk Paint by Waverly and going all over to give me that bright red star frame that I was looking for. And since this is going on my front door and I want it to be super durable, I do go ahead and paint the back as well to seal in all that paper mache. I go over the front too with another coat and this is the large wreath form from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use some burlap ribbon, some blue Easter ribbon, and some brown rope from the Dollar Tree to make this look like a life ring or a life buoy, however you want to say it. It is the 18 inch um, wreath form. Definitely needs to be that big for all we're going to do. So we're going to kind of combine, I guess, two wreath forms together to make a bigger piece. I'm just going to wrap it in burlap. Um, using some of that burlap ribbon. Nowadays, they have the rolled burlap at Dollar Tree, which is even wider, which would make this even easier. Um, I use that for the anchor reef that I have right now on my door. And, um, but this will do the same thing. It's just gonna take a little bit more wrapping, a little bit more seams to do it with a skinnier ribbon like this. But just going all the way around, till we run out of ribbon. And then we had to start a second package of it to finish it. I just hot glue it to the back and keep wrapping all the way around this reform. I love buying these large reforms from the Dollar Tree. I think they're a great value for $1.25. So now that we have it all wrapped in burlap, I want to make it look like a life ring. So I'm just using some blue ribbon from Dollar Tree, the Easter ribbon, um, and some Dollar Tree brown rope. I'm securing that to the back and gluing the ribbon over to seal it in. That way it sticks out on the sides like it would on a life ring. So you're gonna need four pieces of ribbon for this. And this blue is a nice beachy color. I always try to stock up on that every year at Easter because I love it. It's a nice big blue ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Makes some great coastal projects. 
and kind of looping the, you know, you want the rope to be a little bit larger, kind of stick out the sides to make it look like that life buoy effect. And I do glue it down to the back of the burlap and then glue both pieces of that blue ribbon down. And then we'll just hide like the joint underneath one of those ribbon pieces here at the bottom of this. And just wrap the ribbon over both pieces and that kind of hides where it starts and stops. Now here's our frame and this is what I wanted it for. One of those wood star signs from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree because I want this sign to say something. And so we're gonna make that into a little sign that goes on that and that's actually gonna be its frame. So kind of a creative way to use that star reform, but I like how it turned out. I don't really need a hole in the wood star, so we're just gonna start by filling that in with some spackle to get rid of that. And I also have some spray polycrylic, and so I thought, you know, let's try to um, add a little bit more polycrylic to this so that it holds up. I was still kind of worried about the paper mache, but after I sealed it with the spray poly acrylic, you could also use the brush on. Um, I think it was really durable. Now for the star sign, I'm gonna paint it that beautiful agave chalk paint by Waverly. And this is the same color that we used on, you know, like the USA for the sign that's gonna be out front next to this reef. So it's all gonna go together with the red and this beachy color of blue, um, the agave instead of like a traditional blue that you would have like on a flag, which would be more of a navy, I guess. And I do go over it with a couple of coats to make sure I have really good coverage there on the front of that sign. And I want it to be sealed as well. So I go over it with some spray polycrylic as well because I want it to be durable. Next, I measured my star and I went to my Cricut because we're just gonna make a stencil. I'm gonna use a little stencil vinyl and cut out a fun design to go on the front. And just going to weed this and you'll see the design. I don't know if I still have this design. You didn't used to be able to save these very well in Cricut. If I can find it, I will link it in the description below. But basically, it just says, oh, my stars, and it has some stars around it. I think it's really sweet. I'm going to use my favorite paper transfer paper that I get on Amazon, and we're going to put that on the front here so we can do a little hand-painted sign for the front of our wreath. And I love that saying, oh, my stars. I think it's perfect for the 4th of July making sure I got my stencil vinyl down really good. This was actually Cricut stencil vinyl. Um, I actually use a cheaper version of this now that I get on Amazon too. All of that's linked under my Cricut supplies and my Amazon shop, but I think it works even better than the Cricut and it's definitely um, way more inexpensive. So the first thing I do is go over it with the original color because I didn't want any bleeding on this project. And that's gonna kind of seal my stencil down. Any bleeding is gonna be blue, right? So I go over my stencil with my heat gun and then go back and I'm just using the little stencil daubers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just using ivory chalk paint all over to make the hand painted sign on top of my stencil. And hand painted, definitely the way to go if it's gonna be something that is outside as well, as opposed to using any kind of vinyl on there. And I had to go over it with a couple coats to make sure it was nice and bright. And let's see how this stencil turned out. It did a really good job. The trick of using the original color it does work. I don't often use it, but if it's something important like this, I will definitely try to give it a go. And I think that's really super cute. 
I do go in with my white paint pen and touch up any areas that might need it, but otherwise I think it turned out pretty good. I also want to give it a slight ivory distress all over to give it that coastal farmhouse vibe that I like. Not too much and just wipe off the excess with a baby wipe just to give it some character, but I don't want to mess up my stencil on there, so I'm being kind of careful. And then I'm also going to distress my red star with some ivory. It's so sealed in. I think it was pretty easy to distress it at this point. And that's how it all looks together. I wanted a little bit more distressing just to kind of make it look older. So I did distress it with a little bit of antique wax by Waverly too. Just again to add a little bit of character to everything. Not too much, just a little around the edges here. And just like the white, um, I just wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. Okay, let's put this reef together. As you can see, the star fits really well right here on the front. And I think I'm just going to use the little star tips, all five, touch the, the reef underneath, which was my coastal um, life buoy reef. And, but this is gonna be the 4th of July element to this. So I just used hot glue to attach it to the fabric. I know I don't like to use hot glue outside, but it really, seem to work well for this project. My front door is a little bit more protected than some other areas of my porch. And I just make sure it's all good and hot glued to the burlap. Then we just need, um, I didn't really like that the um, rope for the sides of um, the buoy were a little floppy, a little floppier than I would like. So I was trying to think of a way that I can make them a little bit sturdier. So I'm just gonna use some of that wired jute from Dollar Tree and just wrap that around them. That's gonna give them a wired effect where I can make them kind of stand exactly the way I want them. But the wired jute kind of blends in with the rope because it's like the same color and everything. So I do do that on both sides here just to make them stick out kind of like I want. Otherwise, they were kind of all over the place, if you know what I mean. And the top hoop we can just use for a hanger and the bottom will naturally hang down. So I think that's okay. Now we can put our wood sign here on its frame. And I use hot glue again to attach that to our little um, star that we made out of paper mache. There were several steps in this process for sure, but I think it turned out really cute. And this is how it looks hanging on my front door for the 4th of July. Very coastal, very patriotic. I love the combination and I think all the colors work really well together. What do you think? Super cute. Okay. Now this can be used as a reef too. I use this as a wall hanging in my entryway and I love it. It is a wood round from the hardware store. I actually got it at Home Depot. I think it was around $10 at the time I bought it. And what I'm gonna try to do is attempt sublimation on raw wood. Not technically something that doesn't work, but not something that is typically done, but I had a sublimation printer and I wanted to try it out. Now, if you're not set up for sublimation, don't worry. You could always um, make a stencil of some kind, add your name to it, or just hand paint it. I just wanted to try this underneath what we're gonna do. Um, this is gonna be a giant patriotic sign, but I want it to be like a home sign that I can use every year. So, I'm cutting out the individual pieces and kind of arranging them on there using heat tape and taping down my sublimation paper that again, I printed in a mirror image so that we can try sublimation. So I try 400 for one minute. I always like experimenting and that seemed to work really well. My easy press is not super large though, so I have to break it up and do um, separate sections, 400 for one minute. I can tell that I had some bleeding right there at the K where I overlapped, so 
that's not the greatest, but we'll make it work. I wanted to do like a paint stain over this to make this kind of look like a flag. And I kind of wanted the sublimation of our name to kind of shine through. So kind of like a wood burning almost. This was totally an experiment, but it was super fun. So like I put the Tolkien family, I'm gonna put like some other details on there, like established 2002 along the bottom. And again, you have to use heat tape if you're gonna do sublimation. I need to get back into sublimation. I don't hardly ever do it anymore, but it's so much fun. You can make so many things with it. And I love experimenting with things like this, like raw wood. Um, using it just on the raw wood. I didn't add any kind of vinyl or anything like that. Um, just straight on the wood. And just using whatever iron I can find there at the moment. We're going to get this on here. And I think that looks as good as it's going to look. I'm going to give it a quick sand. I was a little worried about the bleeding in my sublimation that you were going to be able to see it in the final product. So what I do is I do have some paint about the same color um, as my wood round. And I'm going to try to go in here and just touch it up a little bit before I go in and add the colors to see if I can kind of disguise that a little bit. I promise you guys 20 DIYs today. I'm bringing it, man, with 20 DIYs. Um, this is a long video. I'm trying not to lose my voice here. <laughs> now, I want to do like a quadrant up here in the corner. And so I'm just using some printer paper and some painter's tape. And I'm just going to block that off to kind of protect that area of my wood round. And I want to paint it to look like a coastal flag, right? So... I'm going to have to do stripes. So again, I'm using Dollar Tree painter's tape. We're going to continue that line straight across. And then you can just use little pieces like that to space that out fairly evenly. And we're going to do just a simple flag stripe pattern all the way up to the top here. And uh, these wood rounds from a hard, um, Home Depot, like super sturdy, super heavy. I did have to kind of reinforce the hanger on this and stuff, um, but definitely fun to craft with. I've also used these with my Cricut and they are beautiful, nice thick pieces of wood. And just going all the way down to the bottom with my painter's tape flag stripes and then we can get started at decorating this. Now I'm gonna use a roller from the, um, I don't think this one's from Dollar Tree. I think this one's just from Target. And some bright red candy apple acrylic paint. I'm gonna mix that half and half with water because I wanna kind of do that paint stain like I tried to do with my shelf sitter outside um, over this wood so we can still get that great wood grain in the final project. So, and I want you to be able to read our name through it, right? So you want it to be very thin so I'm just gonna use a roller because it's such a big project and we're gonna go all around our little flag, just staining that. And then I use a baby wipe over it to kind of wipe off any of the excess. And you can only see those areas that I kind of touched up a little bit, didn't take the stain, which I was kind of worried about, but we'll make it work. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the top part of our flag. And all the way around all the edges too. Just kind of distressing that and that same red stain. And see the areas of the paint totally didn't take the stain. Probably should have touched it up later rather than beginning, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off my painter's tape, the Dollar Tree painter's tape. I mean, it's not the best. You're gonna get some bleeding. Luckily, I kind of had that color so I can kind of touch that up if I need to. But basically, we're just taking all of this off now. And what I have is that beautiful red stripe. That's what I was trying to go for on my shelf sitter that we made for outside. 
Um, I didn't get it because I didn't really like how I taped it before, but it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And the sublimation worked. I mean, you can definitely see it through the paint. So I'm just gonna use some of that red paint to try to touch up the areas, you know, where I had painted before. And then going back with that tan paint to kind of touch up my edges, that was really the areas where I had the most bleeding just to make that look a little bit better before we finish this off. Okay, so now we need to kind of reverse tape what we did before. So we're gonna go to the edges of the stripes that we did and mark that off with some painter's tape. And we can go in and do this section in blue. Um, I wanna use acrylic for this as well. I'm using like a bright turquoise mixed half and half with water to create a turquoise stain for this part. And then we're just gonna go over that little quadrant of the sign with that beachy blue color. I love the red and blue together, it's so fun. And again, I just wanted a thin coat, so I go over that with a baby wipe and wipe off any of the excess paint and stain. And I am gonna have to touch it up a little bit just because of the bleeding. But all in all, I would say that the sublimation underneath the paint stain worked. It does kind of look like a wood burning, right? And it's definitely gonna be permanent for sure. Just kind of touching that up after removing my tape. And I really like that flag feel on the wood round shape. I think that's super fun. So I let this dry and then what I'm gonna do is kind of touch it up a little bit here and there, but I'm also gonna distress it to make it, you know, look very coastal, a farmhouse. And so I'm gonna use a little ivory chalk paint and a chunky brush and we're gonna go over the whole thing, giving it a little bit of a whitewash feel. And again, it's the red and wood stripes. It's not really red and white, but that light wood gives you that same kind of effect, right? Just to give it that more coastal farmhouse. And I did go over it a couple of times and distressed it heavily. I want it to look really old and weathered and I sanded that down as well. Now I wanna I treat this with polycrylic too, just in case I wanna hang this outside. Um, I actually might hang this outside this year. It's definitely a really cool piece and I wanna seal it and make sure that all of my hard work stays on there. I, the sublimation, I would say it was a success. Maybe if I had a bigger heat press, I wouldn't have had the bleeding issue, which did cause me some issues, but all in all, I like it. If you're not set up for sublimation though, you could probably get the same effect by doing a stencil with maybe some, um, you could do a wood burn marker um, and use your heat gun, or you could also use like those little uh, wood finish um, markers from the hardware store or hardware aisle at the Dollar Tree. That would work as well. Now we are gonna border this out with some white rope from the Dollar Tree. I love a good rope frame. I do wanna use it to make a hanger as well. So I just tied a loop like that at the top. So we would have a nice coastal hanger at the top. And then we can glue that all the way around this giant wood round sign. Now this is what I talked about when I had to reinforce it a little bit, cause I am gonna use hot glue to attach it to the sides, but it's big and heavy. So I also used some nails as well, um, because I wanna make sure that that hanger stays attached to the top. But just hot gluing it all the way around. And this definitely has this old time looking sign. Like maybe it was weathered, it's been around since 2002, way back when, <laughs> we said I do. 
I was trying to decide on there what year you put on there. Do you put like the year that you were married or do you put like the year that you like lived together, right? I went with the married year. <laughs> And then this is the reinforcement. I just take some nails and I'm just going to nail those right into the top of the rope straight into the wood round just to reinforce that a little bit because I didn't know if it was going to be strong enough. And I'm trying to show you, but it's almost too big. <laughs> but here it is. My my family patriotic um, sign definitely has a coastal vibe. And we even tried some sublimation on it just for fun. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty cool. Okay. Have you guys seen these before? They're the red, white, and blue lays they have every year at the 4th of July. And I looked at these and I thought... How could we make like a coastal or tropical flag out of these, right? Because we've got the red, white, and blue, but the thing is, is they make them, you know, like all mixed together, red, white, and blue together in a lay. So the first step is I have to separate them. So this was a lot of unstringing and restringing on this project, but it actually turned out really cool. And I do hang this outside on my front porch for the 4th of July, and it's so fun, very whimsical. So I put on a good YouTube show, and I just start unstringing these. Now, as you can see, they are on strings, and they have those little white spacers in between, and I am saving those because I will need to use those when I restring them. I just need a red pile and a white pile and a little bit of a blue pile. I'm not going to need as many of those because um, that part of the flag won't be as big. Now, I'm going to use just some of that thin twine from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to start stringing these. So I am using like a large needle that I have and I'm trying to figure out how long I want my flag to be. So just measuring that out now and cutting that down to size. Fairly large as you can see. I think, what did I do? Two to three, eight, mm, three feet maybe. And I am just gonna start stringing these on there with the needle. So I tied a knot in the bottom of the twine and then we're just gonna slide that down between every flower. We're gonna use a spacer and the flowers um, look best when you double them up. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I do two white flowers, a spacer and more white flowers and we're gonna start stringing these up. So I wanted to string like a bunch of white ones and a bunch of red ones. So definitely put something on you enjoy if you're gonna be stringing your own lays like this because <laughs> it's just time consuming. It's definitely not a lot of work, but it was really fun in the end. So I got my white one, now we've switched to the red. So we're doing the stripes of the flag. I want it to look like a flag hanging sideways, hanging down, so it'll have red and white stripes, but it'll also have like a blue um, box for the flag in there as well. So I just started cutting like multiple strings dad at a time, and we're just gonna go red, white, red, white until I think I have enough of them where I need to start switching to blue um, when I am, I guess, like maybe two thirds of the way through a rope. So I'm trying to speed this way up <laughs> and cut lots of it out. Hopefully it's not too crazy for you. And this is where I switch to blue. On a white stripe, I just switched to blue. And then I'm kind of counting um, how many I was doing as well. So I'll know um, 
uh, where to start and stop those. You can kind of look by referencing them together, but it makes it easier, I think, if you count them. So red, and now we're doing a blue on a red stripe, just like we did before. And when you get to the end, you can just tie them off. Now, what we're gonna hang this on um, is just a five gallon paint stir stick from a Dollar Tree. It can be anything, but this is gonna be the right length. I think we can make this work. I'm just gonna cut the handle off of this so it's not like an odd shape. And sand that down. This is gonna be the side of our flag because we're it's actually gonna be the top because we're gonna hang it um, hanging down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stain that paint stir stick with some antique wax by Waverly to bring out that beautiful wood grain. Even a paint stir stick can be pretty, right? And this could be anything. You could use craft wood, you could use ruler. A ruler might be a little too short depending on how large you do it, but let me show you how I string these on. I'm just gonna have them go over the front and then we can attach them to the back of it. And I'm just trying to figure out like how many I have, trying to figure out my spacing. And I think I ended up hanging them like um, at the one inch mark and then like every uh, two inches maybe to kind of evenly space them out a little bit. So these are easy red and white stripes. So I just alternate them, gluing the twine um, on the back then I did another stripe and three blues. And I'm just gonna start gluing those all to the back as well. Once I got this put together, I was kind of looking at it and thinking that maybe I didn't make my blue box for the um, flag quite big enough. And so I do go in there and change it slightly but I'm just tying um, off both ends with some twine to make a simple hanger for it. That's when I was like, you know, I don't think three rows is enough. So I fixed that just by removing that one and just removing that many white ones and just restringing those with blue to switch part of that row to blue. And that made it look um, way more like the flag shape should. So, it was kind of an experiment. It was kind of, kind of time consuming, but I think it's really fun idea for a whimsical flag, especially with like a coastal or tropical feel. I think it would be great for a 4th of July party as well. And whenever you hang your flag vertically like that, you're still gonna wanna hang the blue part of the flag over to the left. This is how it looks hanging on the side of my cabinets in my kitchen. It's so fun. Okay, now this is a pool noodle DIY. What I want, I want to make this look like fireworks and I'm gonna kind of tie these up to kind of look like buoys a little bit. So a little bit of a coastal feel on this one, but just cutting down different sizes and um, trying to make these look like giant firecrackers. This was a 4th of July party decoration I put together and I was just looking for different ways we could cover these fireworks. And this is a patriotic bandana from the Dollar Tree with a firework pattern all over. So I just cut that down where it is the right height and large enough to completely go around my blue fun noodle. This was so easy to put together and so fun. And this is a great outdoor decoration as well for 4th of July. And we're just gonna attach the fabric with hot glue. No sewing, no nothing. We have a giant firework. <laughs> now for the wick, we have the opening there in the fun noodle. So I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree rope to make a giant wick for the top of our firework. I'm gonna tie a knot in the end and glue that down inside the hole with a little hot glue. Now let's keep making fireworks. So we did different sizes. 
This is another bandana from the Dollar Tree. Um, this one's kind of nice and it's white. It's got a great 4th of July pattern all over it. And we're gonna do the same thing. I just cut it down to size where it'll be the right height and width to go all the way around, overlapping slightly and gluing down the finished edge makes it even more complete. We're gonna cut some more rope from the Dollar Tree. I just tie a simple knot here in the end. And just like before, we're going to hot glue that right in the center of the fun noodle. I did buy blue fun noodles because it would go 4th of July. You could do red, you could do white. Otherwise, you could always paint them too. And then I have this one. I wasn't sure this bandana was gonna quite work as well um, because it's not like an all over pattern like um, the others, but we're gonna make it work. <laughs> what I wanted was just this blue fabric on the side. So I just cut that part off and I cut two pieces and we'll just piece them together. So I just wrap half of it with that blue star pattern this way, it kind of looks like it has an all over pattern, just like the other ones. And hot glue that all around, just two pieces of fabric this time. And trimming off any excess fabric and it just needs a wick as well. These little uh, fireworks were so easy to put together and maybe not super coastal, but definitely 4th of July. The reason I kind of thought they kind of looked a little bit coastal is because I'm just going to kind of tie them together. It kind of gave me like the feeling of like tying together like a buoy or something like that. And again, I'm just using Dollar Tree rope. And we're just going to simply tie them together. Just a fun, easy um, 4th of July party decoration. Super quick and fun and lightweight and I guess weatherproof. So I just wrapped it around, tied it off nice and secure and cut off the excess rope. And this party decoration is ready to go. So quick and easy and who doesn't love some giant fireworks, right? And if you wanted it to be a little bit more coastal, you could always do some more coastal fabrics too. I kind of did a more traditional um, red, white and blue with those. Okay, moving on over to a coastal 4th of July coffee bar. So I'm going to do a coffee bar sign and the color I'm trying to mix is Statue of Liberty color. And I had a hat for reference from the Dollar Tree. So I was mixing some blues and greens. It's kind of a different color to get to, but I kept trying until I got to that color because what I want to do is make a Statue of Liberty coffee bar sign. Now I'm gonna use one of these chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. And I don't know why I thought I could cover that white paint on there with that, but it's definitely gonna require um, maybe a few more coats of paint to get over that. But this was back before I built my coffee bar. So um, at the time I just had a little tiny shelf hanging on the wall. So I had a very small coffee bar when I put this together, but it's still super cute. I learned my lesson. I went back over it with some ivory chalk paint because we have got to mask all that white writing. I love those chalkboards from the Dollar Tree because they're nice and large, thick. They don't really bow very much, but you do have to kind of cover that up if you're gonna use that side. You could always use the other side as well. Um, I don't know why I did this side. Maybe I didn't want to finish the back. Anyway, here is my Statue of Liberty color. I think I did a good job. I think it looks very Statue of Liberty. So going up and down, I want it to look coastal, but I also want it to look um, like a good Statue of Liberty background. And I designed this for my Cricut. I'm 99% sure I still have this Cricut design. And so I'm going to try to find it and share that with you um, in the comments below if you want to recreate this sign. So, you know, 
We've done all of these coastal DIYs. We've decorated the front porch with coastal 4th of July. Now we've moved inside. We're doing a coffee bar. I know a lot of you guys really enjoy these long videos. And so I'm bringing it to you. 20 of them, right? So we're going to use a white vinyl here for this project and my Cricut. And I made a really fun design for this one and I can't wait for you to see it. So I'm gonna go through here and weed off my excess white vinyl. And you guys can see this really fun image. So I have the Statue of Liberty and She's holding a coffee cup. I replaced her torch with a coffee cup and it says life, liberty, and the pursuit of coffee, which I thought was really funny for a coffee bar sign. And we're just weeding that all off here. And then I'm going to use my paper transfer paper. This is the big like 12 inch roll. It is great as well. I get that on Amazon too. And we're going to transfer our vinyl over to it. I didn't make my piece quite big enough, but you can always just kind of double layer it up. And it works so good that you can reuse this too um, to transfer vinyl. And we're gonna put the vinyl that we cut out directly onto that chalkboard that we made for a cute little coffee bar sign. I thought the white against that like bluish green color that we did would be really cute. This was one of the first files that I learned how to make. I definitely had to learn how to put a coffee cup in her hand, <laughs> but she turned out really cute. So we're gonna peel off our transfer paper and you're gonna be able to see the design that we have below. I don't always do hand painted signs. Sometimes I choose to use the vinyl on the sign, which is what we did with this one. And it actually worked out just fine. So just making sure all of the vinyl is nice and secure on this. And then I'm going to go over the whole thing with Mod Podge because, again, it's kind of like a sticker. I don't really want it coming off. I want this to be sealed and last. So we're going to go in and seal this with a coat of a Mod Podge. I think this is the matte Mod Podge. I give it a good dry and I go back in with one more coat just because I want to make sure that this vinyl stays in place. I've also used like the HTV, the heat transfer vinyl on wood signs at works as well. Now I do want it to look coastal, right? So I am going to distress it a little bit with some ivory and a chunky brush, kind of working in one direction, just giving it a light distressing just to give it a little bit more character. I think this is going to be the perfect sign for my coffee bar. So cute. I love the saying. Um, I didn't have much because I just had one shelf. So I did use some like 4th of July decorations on this. I did do one more DIY for this coffee bar. And I'm going to show that to you as well. I'm just going to take some Dollar Tree twine. Tie that in the front. And we're just going to make a simple little twine hanger. And this is how it turned out, isn't it cute? I love my little Statue of Liberty with her cup of coffee. And I think that saying is so funny. Just a very simple a silhouette of the Statue of Liberty. Very patriotic. Okay, this is the other DIY that I did for the coffee bar and look, Ray Dunn. Metal Star I got for a dollar <laughs> at um, TJ Maxx. The reason being is because it was class of 2020. And if you remember back in 2020, TJ, TJ Maxx was not even open, right? The stores were closed. So they had this graduation stuff they couldn't even sell. So they had to clearance it really low, right? But I thought it was a star. It would be great to pick up for 4th of July. So that's what I did. 
I do want to paint and refinish it, so that's why I just removed it from the base just by using the screws to remove it. And we are going to um, paint it. I tried to get the paint off of it to make it a little easier with some um, fingernail polish remover, but no such luck. So we're just gonna go in and paint it with some ivory paint just to kind of disguise the writing first so that we can go back in and paint this. And we're using that bright red crimson color again. I do a couple of coats around the edges because I did have to kind of cover up that black metal that was back there. But we're just gonna do a little DIY sign with this. Whenever you see stars like on clearance from Christmas and stuff like that, it's always fun to pick them up for 4th of July too. Um, Cause you can always do your own a little DIY with this. And so I go over the front as well. We want this star to be bright red, not black. And then we can personalize this for a 4th of July coffee bar. Now I'm gonna use my Cricut again, some more white vinyl, and I am gonna do some vinyl to make our own little sign here. And, and this was really cute too. I wanted it to be like another coffee saying, but something to do um, with the 4th of July. So I decided with red, white, and brew, I thought that was cute and funny. And I did do like the skinny, which is the same as the Ray Dunn font on top, since this was a Ray Dunn piece anyway. And just did like a cursive font for the brew and combined them all together. Just cut it out with white vinyl. And we're just gonna transfer that over to our newly red star. Always fun to remake over a clearance product. And this one was even cheaper than the Dollar Tree, right? And it's a nice metal star with a great wood base that now we can reattach to this. And it turned out so cute. So it had actual screws screwing it on. So we're just gonna go ahead and put like the little nuts back on and this will be ready to go for my coastal 4th of July coffee bar. I'm thinking about doing maybe a, another patriotic coffee bar again this year. I haven't quite decided yet. I really love my B one that I have. If you haven't seen that video, you'll have to check it out. It's so cute. I'm going to have a hard time taking it down. Okay, I wanted to have a little coastal vibe, so I'm gonna use a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and some ivory paint, and we're gonna lightly distress it, wiping off the excess with a baby wipe. You guys know I love to distress things. Goes with my coastal vibe. And I think that's super cute, and it has a great wood base on it as well. I also distress the sides to kind of make it look a little bit more uniform. And again, this was a very small patriotic coffee bar, so I really only had a couple of DIYs. But I'm glad I picked that up on clearance. I think it turned out really cute. And this is how it looks hanging in front of our little Statue of Liberty sign. And on my little coffee bar. Okay. Are you ready for some more patriotic DIYs? This one's really easy. This is a little sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. I love it because it's like, it has a little blue um, star on there. I thought that'd be perfect for 4th of July. I didn't really want it to say shoot for the stars though. I wanted to make, put a little patriotic saying on here. So I'm just using some fingernail polish remover and trying to take off the saying. Sometimes that works. It kind of worked. <laughs> As you can see, it really made it um, where I can sand it and kind of add my own color, which I kind of already have that color. This agave chalk paint, but we're just gonna leave the little wood star attached to the galvanized metal um, background. And we're just making and make a cute little patriotic um, sign, but definitely a coastal feel by going all over that with some of that agave chalk paint. And this is a little sign. I just wanted a little sign to hang like on the knob of the drawer um, where I was had some patriotic DIYs. And um, I think it was super easy to put together. It's just a little fun touch. Sometimes I like to hang little signs like this around. 
And I did go over it with another coat just to kind of make sure that you can't read the writing behind it. And then I'm gonna go in with a brush and a little ivory and we're just gonna give it a slight distress all over to give it that coastal farmhouse feel. And you could totally hand paint what I'm gonna add to this, but I already cut Cricut vinyl, so I thought I might as well do it for this one as well. And I just did a 1776 in a skinny font. Just a fun little nautical, um, patriotic DIY. Super cute. Just a fun little detail sign. This would be really cute on a tear tray for the 4th of July as well. Cute. And this is how it looks. Hanging on a knob on my entryway where I have it all decorated for the 4th of July. And again, a lot of that earlier footage, um, my pictures, I didn't have any individual pictures for. So if you stick around um, for the final reveal here in a little bit, um, you're gonna be able to see how everything all looks together. So I include the video footage as well. Okay, now we are going to try to make um, three little um, dry erase boards. They're like little easels. And I wanted to make one U, one S, one A, but I wanted to do like a coastal patriotic theme on these. But the reason I am trying to take them apart is because I wanted to attempt sublimation on these. Again, I was experimenting because I heard that you could do sublimation on dry erase boards without needing to laminate them or anything like that first. And you know, it's always good to experiment on some cheap items from the Dollar Tree, right? But it actually worked out really well. The only challenging part was getting the backs off of these. I probably should have used a little heat. I might have had um, some better luck getting that to come off a little cleaner. But basically, um, I want to take the backs off because I tried sublimating on these and um, didn't turn out very good and I think it's because I didn't get even pressure. Pressure is really important when you're using sublimation. And what I did was I took like an ocean background and I made some patriotic USA letters. Not sure if I still have this file or not. I will check. I'll check to see if I have this too. If I have it, I will include it. But basically I wanted to show you that you can do sublimation on these little dry erase boards from the Dollar Tree, but taking them off the easel that worked best for me, I just secured my sublimation print, which I printed in reverse with heat tape, and I'm just covering that with some parchment paper. And um, I'm actually using some printer paper too. That seems to help. And I am, because the, the ink can transfer through that. I don't want it getting on my press. I'm just using my Cricut Easy Press and going in there for 400 degrees for one minute to see if this works. And it totally did, it looked great. So I popped off a, another sign. We're gonna do a, the S. While we're waiting on that to do sublimation, we can start preparing our third one. And I thought I could display these side by side quick USA sign. This is one of my first videos here on YouTube. Um, I didn't even have a silicone mat yet, not even a different color. Um, and so this was my humble beginnings, experimenting with a little sublimation, but it is coastal, it is patriotic. So I thought, hey, why not include it? Um, I know some of you guys are interested in sublimation and I did have a little, little tearing there on the sides, but otherwise I had really good luck with all three of these. Now, I didn't have such good luck taking this one apart, but it came apart in pieces. And here is our final letter, USA. Oh, you know, I think I created this in Canva, so I should still be able to share these images for sure. Hopefully I'll remember, because I know I've promised to include a lot of files. Not sure if I can find all of them, but I will try to. 
I thought about not using tape, but I thought I better, otherwise it's gonna like kind of move all around, but I'm gonna be kind of careful and just do the corners. This time I just did printer paper and see if that works as well. Um, 400 degrees for one minute, just a normal sublimation time and temperature and just using my Cricut Easy Press and looks pretty good. So the experiment was successful. Now it's just a matter of putting these back on the easels because I do want them to have the easels. So I just hot glue those back on and I will just have to touch up the areas around the edges that did get kind of messed up a little bit with the sublimation. Not much to touch up, but a little bit. And I thought it was fun. Just, I like to experiment with sublimation because there's so many different surfaces that you can do sublimation on. Um, with clothing, it can be a little bit difficult because a lot of times you have to use like polyester to do the sublimation and you have to do like light colors or whites. You can um, use different materials. Um, ooh, did you see my hair then? This was during 20, um, 21 and um, I was having some quarantine um, fun with my hair and I had bleach blonde hair, like as blonde as you could get it. And I was having to do it myself because I couldn't go to the hair salon. And you know what? All of my hair broke off and I had to regrow all of my hair. Um, that's why my hair was so short when I started um, my YouTube channel because of uh, the bleaching. So it was a fun thing while I was bored, but I wouldn't recommend doing that yourself. <laughs> but this is how our little USA boards turned out. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, don't forget to leave an emoji of an American flag down below. So I know you're the realist. It really helps me here on YouTube. If you make it all the way through the video, I really appreciate it. Hey guys. I wanted to let you guys know that I've introduced memberships here at Crafty Beach for $4.99 a month. You can support my channel. You're going to get early access to my videos and other perks and you can cancel any time. I really appreciate the support and check out these eight Crafty Beach Bum members. I want to give a huge thank you to Coastal Couple. I am Mojo Jojo, Karen O'Haran, Lee Ann, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Pamela Bergeron and Sally Cooper. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support so much. And now it's time for the final reveal. I'm gonna give you the final reveal of all 20 DIYs we did today. Don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers.
America.
much for watching if you would like to watch more crafty beach youtube thinks you might enjoy this video right here